Joining me now is Dr. Amitava Ghosh, space scientist, former Mars exploration rover mission from NASA. Appreciate your joining us, uh, Dr. Ghosh. Uh, do you believe that all is well and we should be at this time on Wednesday celebrating? Well, it is very hard to say. If you look at my career, um, I have seen so many ups and downs. Mm -hmm. So the first mission that I witness was a failure, the second was a success, the third was a success, the fourth was a failure, the fifth was a failure, the sixth onwards was a success. See, this is an engineering mission. Mm -hmm. There are failure points and it is very hard to predict. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at Luna 25, mm -hmm. the Russians are were best at this game. They were into space before the Americans were. If you remember 1961 Sputnik, they had the capability. No, they had a rover which would explore the moon for one year. Why significant? Because they would survive the lunar night. They did not succeed. You know, nothing is guaranteed. All we know is no matter what happens, life will go on. And but, this but is, is this, 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 this Dr. Ghosh the most, uh, in a way, the most complex maneuver, this last stretch, is that the most complex or are most of the difficult maneuvers over? No. This is the most complex. So imagine the hazard avoidance cameras or the ground detection camera, they detect the ground, but they miscalculate by even 10 meters or 100 meters. So what will happen? It will slow down, ha happening that, assuming that the ground is here, but the ground is actually here. So at this point, the velocity would be near zero and then it would again accelerate. Mm -hmm. Then there may be rocks wherever it's trying to land. So there are possibilities, you know, we have encountered in our, um, Mars missions mm -hmm. that, you know, um, this is the toughest part. We call it the seven minutes of terror in for a Mars mission. So this is really the hardest part. You know, uh, there are those, of course, who are saying that Chandrayaan-3 incorporates what is being called the salvage mode, which will ensure a successful event in case of unforeseen circumstances. So just give us a sense of, uh, of what are these, what are these unforeseen circumstances? You mentioned one just now, but uh, what, according to you, are those unforeseen circumstances and how confident should we be that we now are in a better place than we were uh, with Chandrayaan 2? So I am not uh, in the mission team, so I wouldn't be able to tell you a lot, but I'll tell you what are the general failure points. See, so these are four legs, right? What if it doesn't land on the four legs? What if there is a da damage of a leg? Mm -hmm. uh, what if there is a rock and it lands and it is kind of tilted? What if it um, really did not, um, the, the retro rockets did not kick in at the right time? Mm -hmm. So there are multiple things. But, you know, I think based on what Chandra, happened to Chandrayaan 2, I think Istro and the chairman and everybody has come and repeatedly assured that, you know, the engineering is perfect now. So I would expect a successful landing. In that, sense, that, in, in that sense, could this be a coming of age moment? The fact is that what four four nations of uh, India will be the fourth nation after the US, Russia and China to do this. Uh, yes. You know, this this really is we are on the cusp of history. Yes. The reason why this is so important, it is not about Chandrayaan 3. It is about delivering this capability to land on another planet or another moon. Mm -hmm. That is really the crux. If you do this, maybe the next step would be landing on Mars. Maybe the next step would be landing on an asteroid. Maybe it might be going back to the moon. Maybe it might be going to Venus. Mm -hmm. So it just opens up a lot of possibilities. It's a development of capability, which is so fascinating about the mission. You know, just a concluding word. Uh, ISRO scientists at the moment aren't opening themselves up uh, to the media. They must be predictably nervous and and, you know, we're wishing them well and hoping everything goes on smoothly. But as someone who's dealt with these missions, success and failure, give us a sense of what this means for the scientists who will be there at the moment, watching every little move of what is happening in these last, this last stretch. It is very hard. So, you know, you have to really steal yourself. As I told you, in my life, I've seen three failures. And, you know, everything that you worked for is destroyed. So you have to be very strong mentally and then you have to think that, well, no matter what, tomorrow life is going to go on. Even if it's a success, there'll be huge euphoria, you know, 
when Ma- Mars Pathfinder landed, you know, we did not know what to do with the time. There were so many people interested in the mission. But when the climate orbiter, Mars climate orbiter died, then everybody said, well, I mean, what, what are you guys doing? So, you know, you have to balance and you have to think as a scientist, your life will go on, your venture will go on. This is just another step. Tomorrow will be, everything will be okay, no matter what happens. India's remarkable space scientists are about to script a slice of history. Dr. Ghosh, for giving us a bit of your inside track on what it means, I appreciate you joining me there. Thank you so much. Absolutely, a pleasure. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.